The Walt Disney Studios Park is considered to be the weakest of the Disney parks around the world. And this becomes even more noticeable when compared to the perfection that is the Disneyland Park just a few meters from it. Either way, this summer we went over every ride in the Disneyland Park and ranked them from worst to best. Today, let's do the exact same thing, but for the European Disney Studios theme park. Oh boy! Just like in the last video, let's go over what is considered a ride. You, the guest, need to enter a vehicle of sorts. It's gonna be a shell, an elevator, a spaceship designed by Tony Stark, or, on top of it all, a huge rat. You need to enter a ride vehicle and it needs to move you around. If that happens, congratulations, it's a ride! Now that I got that out of the way, make sure to follow along and watch until the end to find out what I consider to be the best of the best in the Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss when I upload a new video as I explore theme parks from the past to the future. Let's start ranking. At number 11, we have the Flying Carpets over Agrabah. It's a spinner ride similar to Dumbo or Orbitron over at the other park and doesn't have much going for it. Currently, the placement of the attraction makes no sense, as Aladdin isn't a Pixar film and so it doesn't belong in worlds of Pixar. It's a remnant of old Walt Disney Studios Park, as it's the only ride still remaining from opening day. The queue is quite bad and feels like backstage, which takes a lot from the immersion. I fear it won't last much longer as the park is undergoing a massive transformation, so it better enjoy it while we can, but we won't lose that much when or if it goes away in the near future. Coming up next is Slinky Dog Zigzag Spin. The Toy Story Playland opened as an expansion to the park in August 2010, and with it came three rides. They're not incredible rides, but fun nonetheless, and Slinky is, for me, the most basic one. One could call it a roller coaster because of the technicalities behind the ride, and at the end, it just goes round and round without getting anywhere. The queue and area are very well themed, and it does get some extra points for that. As a kiddie ride, it's a fun attraction. But let's move on to the next one. At number 9 we have, and I'm sorry for my French, Cars 4 Rurali. It opened in 2007 as an expansion to Toon Studio alongside Crush's Coaster and since then it has welcomed many guests into its 12 cars. It's somewhat similar to the Mad Hatter's teacups as it spins you on two axes, but I find it to be more fun. The queue and area surrounding it steals the show as it's very detailed and immersive, even if in a small scale. The mini Radiator Springs may not be as incredible as its sister in California, but it's very cute. Because of that, and by having a more interesting ride system, it finds itself in this place. Next, we go back to Toy Story Playland as RC Racer comes at the 8th spot. This ride has many problems from capacity to just how short it is. It takes about 50 seconds from start to the end. It's quite thrilling though, especially if you sit in the front or back seats. The queue until the last room is incredible and features a lot of toy theming that fits right in the land. But it's not enough to elevate this ride, especially since you spend most of your time in the same spot as this queue takes a very long time to move, which leads us back to the capacity problem. At number 7 we have another Cars themed ride, and that is Cars Road Trip. Yes, I know, how isn't it in the first place? Well, this ride uses many of the old tram to retraction and didn't really add much to it. The sets are pretty bad and the only truly good scene is Cars Tastrophe Canyon, where you see the fire and water as the main elements. Other than that, there is some fun humor throughout and the video playing is really good in quality. Overall, it's a fun ride that normally doesn't have big queues, and it's a good place to rest for a while, making it a good experience. Toy Soldier's Parachute Drop is up next, and you might wonder how it came so far in the list, and I have some reasons for that. Also known as the Studios Expansion Lookout Tower, this simple family drop ride acts as the main draw into Playland, 
It gives some awesome panoramic views of the park and especially amazing to see all the construction happening. Everyone can enjoy it together from smaller ones to adults and can be considered a great start for drop towers. Similarly to RC Racer, it suffers because of the capacity, but overall it's not bad. Coming at number 5, we find Crush's Coaster. The spinning coaster is where everyone runs to when the park opens, so it has to be great, right? Well, kind of. The ride itself is very fun, especially when you go outside in the dark ride section before getting into the most thrilling part of it. That exact part is mostly in the dark and doesn't have much going for it, just a coaster in a big black box. The queue is very lacking as well. Due to the low capacity, chances are that you'll be waiting for a long time here, and most of the line is in one big empty room filled with switchbacks and people. After spending way more time than you wanted here, the short section of inside queue is actually pretty well themed and fun. If the queue was extended and actually themed and maybe interactive, the overall experience would be so much better. In the end, it's a great family coaster that suffers a lot from capacity problems, which brings the whole experience down. Up next, I selected Web Adventure. Some people don't love this attraction, but I think it's a great interactive shooter, which is something that studios really needed. It's fun for the entire family, and I mean everyone. The queue is very well done and themed, and so is the pre-show with French Spider-Man. The ride itself is a bit of a workout, and you didn't give it your best unless you leave with burning arms. The storyline ties in perfectly with the one from Avengers Campus, and even being a clone, it still proves to be a very fun experience and attraction. It's not perfect by any means, but it checks out every box to be a good ride. In number 3 we have Avengers Assemble Flight Force. Opened in 2022 alongside Avengers Campus and the previous ride, Flight Force is a bit of a controversial attraction. It replaced the beloved Rock and Roller Coaster, and because of that, it would always have a hard time getting to the hardcore fans. Either way, as a roller coaster, it has everything a thrill seeker wants, from an amazing launch to loops and drops. The problem comes with the theming and story. The queue is very well done and features one of the most impressive animatronics in the resort. I mean, I could go on and on about Iron Man. The story is simple and easily understandable during the several rooms and pre-shows, but the ride is lagging a lot. Just like Crushes, it's mostly a roller coaster in a big black box. This summer, new effects were installed such as stars all throughout the building and tracks, and really elevates the experience. But it's not there yet, especially when compared to something like Cosmic Rewind over at Epcot. Leaving Avengers Campus, we can go to the other side of the park and ride what I believe will be a bit of a controversial ride for number 2, and that is Ratatouille the Adventure, or this huge title I won't try to pronounce. I absolutely love Place de Rémy, and the ride feels very special to me. It has some problems, such as its over-reliance on screens, but everything is done incredibly well, and when all the effects are working, such as the heat, water, shaking and smells, it all comes together as an amazing attraction. After passing by the outdoor queue and entering the building, you are instantly transported to the Parisian roofs with a starry night above you as seen in a Pixar film. Elements, such as the Gusteau's sign coming to life, make the queue alone a special experience. The ride right vehicles move like magic, and I could honestly spend a good hour in the loading station just taking in the music and seeing the rat vehicles dance through the floors. I feel like it's an amazing attraction that uses an incredible ride system. Before revealing the number one, which you already know by now, do you agree with the ranking so far? Let me know down below. And here it is, number one, the best attraction in Walt Disney Studios Park couldn't be any other than the Hollywood Tower Hotel itself. Tower of Terror is such an iconic attraction in all the Disney parks it's or was present in, and here it's no exception. 
being one of the most expensive rides Disney had built until then, Tower remains the king in terms of storytelling and theming. This abandoned hotel puts guests right into an episode of the classic The Twilight Zone with an incredible pre-show. The indoor queues in the boiling and mechanical rooms of the hotel are filled with references and spectacular elements that puts you in the right mood. And when it's finally your turn to ride the maintenance elevator and enter the Twilight Zone, you are sure to scream. Currently, there's a strange overlay in the Pear Regent version with different stories that was installed during Halloween some years ago, which take from the entire story, so I wish the original version could return once again. But even so, it definitely remains as the champion of Walt Disney Studios Park. Now, there's a huge expansion going on that will bring new areas and lands to the park. So if you'd like to learn more about it and see the latest updates, make sure to watch this video here. That's it for this week. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. You can find our socials down below. And now, as always, thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.